You ready? has sucked like forever um even a couple people like commented on it on some of the videos that i was doing especially over on the bench uh, and actually lighting is is like a pet peeve for me i'm always concerned about trying to get as much light into the work as possible probably because i'm old and you know lighting is is important for my eyeballs uh, but we did do an upgrade and so i want to give you guys a little bit of a shop update tell you where where we're at and show you the awesome cheap walmart lights we put in it makes such a difference in the shop. Now I can see all the dirt and all the cruft in all the places that I don't want to see, but also I can see uh, the work, which is great. No, but for 14 bucks a piece, <laughs> holy shit. It made a huge made difference. Life, like, considerably for $14 a piece. Folks, it did not want to take the time to do this, but I was like, hey, let's do date night. We'll have some drinks, and we'll, we'll fuck around with the <laughs> shop. It'll be fun. Oh, man. It's like sunshine. It's great. It's great. These are fucking sweet. Yeah. Okay. So here, here's what they were. They a Walmart special. Thinkable LED shop lights. <laughs> <laughs> it was $14. They're so they were janky. They got, like, fake diamond plate on them, and they're not actually steel at all. I don't even know if the house. I think the housing might be actually just, be plastic. Uh, yeah, or aluminum. I don't aluminum. even think it's aluminum. And maybe it's aluminum, but if it is, it's like super thin. And then they put a little diamond plate on it so it looks like it's rough, but like, who cares? I mean, the light is fucking sweet. <laughs> it's insane. Oh. It's like a different shop. It's crazy. Oh, dude. We bought a ton of those. And it made a huge difference, especially over here in this area. It was like super dark over in the lawn boy area and where the, all of the filters and the fluids and all that stuff is. Um, so we're trying to bring back a little bit of, of warmth and light into the shop because it's winter and it's cold and it's depressing and it's dark. Um, but also it just kind of needed it. So there's what things look like now. Um, we also bought one of these sweet ass Stanley uh, posable lights. Um, and I did uh, an unboxing video. So, we have a Stanley uh, 80 watt LED portable corded work light station. Maybe make videos brighter. Yeah, I'm getting feedback it says my videos suck because they're dark. So, also I agree with everybody because <laughs> the lighting here is... Um, uh, not even slightly above average. It's not good. Okay. Whoa! Got poofies on both ends. Looks like it's well protected. Yeah, it's protected. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I don't know what that was. It's a little... Clippy guy? No, it's... Oh, it's an range is what it looks like. Elbow dudes, yeah. Yeah, an elbow dude. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're called, right? <laughs> no, they're not called elbow dudes. Hey, say in the comments, is that an elbow dude? No, no, Bogart, no! <laughs> Bogart boys. He disagrees. Bogart knows that's an Allen wrench, huh, Bogart? Boys? Bogart, no! No, 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 no! Oh, Don't boys. shut it. Okay, we have a light. This is a really funky looking light, dude. Wow. First thoughts, I guess this is like the collapsed position. Yeah. Oh, they got magnets that hold the, they got little neodymium magnets that hold the, the lenses together. So, one of the cool things about this is it can be stowed like this, and it's got a nice cable carrier that goes around here, so you can shove it in the corner when you're not using it. 
the one thing that I that I liked about this and the reason that I agreed that we should purchase this one is that the, the legs look way different than um, those cheap lights that you cheap stand up lights you get at like Lowe's or you know Home Depot or Menards or whatever. And much thicker. These have like these beefy ass legs. I mean, these things are nasty. And it's probably, it's not like contractor grade, but it's like, it, it's good stuff. Like, because that's all, the problem that I typically have with these work lights is that down here at all these joints and down at the bottom, this all gets wobbly. Like everything from here to here, anything that has a pivot point gets really wobbly. And then also up here, and this one's a little different, so it's kind of hard to like, I think it gets pretty tall. Yeah. That's one. If I remember correctly, it should get taller than you. That's, as far as I can tell, as tall as it goes. Which is as tall as me. Um, you've got nice little cam locks here, which feel pretty sturdy, actually. The base is nice. I mean, this is pretty sturdy for a work light. It does take up a lot of floor space, like if you get this expanded completely out. Okay, so if you want it in the full up position, that would be like that. So that seems to, yeah, it holds pretty well. I mean, you can move it if you push on it, but the lights don't weigh much. They got nice heat sinks on them. I mean, the real question is, how do they work? Right? They move like this. And then they move like this. And it looks like maybe 360 degrees. Not quite, but like 300 degrees maybe. God damn, yeah, this fucking chair, man. Oh, it's falling apart, that's why. Yeah, it's Grandpa's chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was, it was Grandpa's chair. Uh, oh, here we go. Sorry, Pappy, but you could choose. So there's sucks. a sealed cover over the switch. That's nice. And Whoa! Yeah, wow. That's like, that's some serious light, dude. <laughs> 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 so what? if we turn there, it's the I mean, only light in the almost, garage. <laughs> that can almost light the shop. In fact, we're gonna replace some of the lights up in here right now, and we'll probably just use that to. To replace See? the lights, because well, I think we're... that, yeah, that whole circuit can be live while this is off. Yeah, I think it'll really help for videos, because then I can... You can have one up and be an ambient light, and right, then another one, one down on... one to the side, or... One yeah. looking at what you're actually working on. No, that's really nice. It's it's easily twice as expensive, if not three times as expensive as a, as a crappy one. But this is, this is nice. If you're tired yeah. of dealing with the janky ones, this is probably a good bet. This this pivot here seems a little bit Weak. loose, but I think, yes, they are nylocks. That's nice. So come over here real quick. So these pivots here are actually nylocks. So what I was saying is that this pivot here is a little loose. So when you get the light all the way out, it kind of wants to fall. But you can adjust this with an Allen, which is the... <laughs> The elbow guy. The elbow guy you were talking about? Yeah, yeah, you can adjust that over here. Yeah, so you use the elbow guy. Yeah, you can use the elbow guy and adjust it there and get a little more tension on this oh, joint. That's nice. Yeah. But it is nice that it's an eye lock, so it's not going to back itself out and get loose as you move it. Yeah. Wow. Um, they don't seem to be getting very hot. I mean, it hasn't been very long. It hasn't been very long, but still... Like well, that's good. The, the the fact that there's they're they're like independently posable like this is really really handy. That's super nice. And again, the base is like the bomb. That is sweet. It's way more stable than any other system I've I've used. And I've only used the crappy ones to be honest, but still. All right, I'm excited about it. That's sweet. Merry Christmas, honey. Thanks. Yay! Alright, let's replace some more lights. You ready? Yep.
<laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. So turn the turn the stand light on now too, and like act like you're gonna work on the M18 or something there. <laughs> oh my gosh! But this thing is super sweet. So if you look over here at the workbench, now things are much easier to see here, like where I would normally be working. Um, and on the bench. Is the M18 and it has both cylinders attached to it now so uh, short story is the M18 videos are gonna be back uh, and that's super exciting um, we have not done very much on this motor in almost two years uh, and it's a good thing that I kept track of some of the measurements and some places that I was at and bagged everything up and stuff because it's, you know, I forgot a lot of stuff. It's a really simple engine to work on though, so it's, you know, not that big of a deal. Uh, but we do have M18 videos uh, in progress and we will continue on that. We're currently doing some stuff with the tiller. Uh, we've got some videos coming out from the tiller. Um, and so they'll already be out by the time this and they're, they're already out with you yeah. okay well they're already out you've already seen those they're cool they're fun the tiller's great the tiller's awesome um and then uh in the background we're also working on the property and we're putting in a fence line and um uh, in the interest of um being able to do some stuff during the week while i'm at work uh i had a special Yay. honeydew request to okay. mount a spinning jenny on to the back of this strange and, and ugly cobbled together attachment for um, the 2166 so got just a piece of three-quarter inch pipe and a little cross brace here so it doesn't wobble like this and then I've got it pinned to this shaft and um, so that the center shaft stays stationary and then this has like a rubber disc right here where the spinning jenny can get a little bit of tension on the spool so it doesn't just spool continuously. So there it is. It actually does the job. These things are heavy and they're bulky and they suck. And um, I tried to mess with it before we even got started on the project and you can see what's happening to the spool. So, um, but now it's whee! So we'll be able to take this around the property. And one of the really like, cool things about garden tractors in general is they're small, they're maneuverable, and uh, they actually are very useful for small projects like this. I mean, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to dig a, a, a pond or something with them. You know, they're not a big tractor that does big stuff. But for little jobs like this, they're perfect. And this is one of the, you know, like, a perfect example of how useful they can be. So this is like a little carryall on the back that I built out of like an ATV uh, rear rack. And then there's some extensions and some other stuff that I welded onto it. But basically now this tractor can be like a mobile station for setting up the fence. And that's the idea. Yeah. So we can put stuff down here and put stuff up here. And then it can move around. Um, and um, since I'm old, it helps the back. Uh, we so are old. We haven't done a lot of fun stuff with tractors, but we do plan on getting back on the 1882. Um and we have a box of parts over here for the trailer. I don't think I've even shown you guys the trailer. No. We bought a trailer. So let's let's briefly go out of the shop. So here is our janky homemade 1980s vintage uh, dual axle car hauler. Car hauler, yeah. Um, roughly 16 foot long. Uh, roughly seven foot between axles. Uh, completely, I, I don't think there is a continuous piece of steel on this entire thing. Like, <laughs> it's made out of tube. It's made out of channel. It's made out of angle. It is an alphabet soup of metals. It is just insane. Um, it was the right price, and we bought it so that. Um, we have a trailer that we can use. It's actually 
a little better suited to moving things that are over a thousand pounds. Like the trailer that we've got there, the utility trailer, this is the one that we've been using for years. This one is a five by eight, I think. It's a five by eight utility trailer, like a Lowe's special. Um, I welded on a deck to it and I built a, a structure underneath. Basically there's a, <laughs> there's a big tubular section that um, supports the deck of the trailer and gives the whole chassis some rigidity that it didn't have from the factory. So I've, I've hobbled this thing along for almost eight or nine, I think eight or nine years now, maybe more than that. Um, but I'm constantly overloading it with tractors that just aren't meant to be on it. And equipment that's not just meant to be on it. I've already broken the spring on it before. Um, so, and also the deck is just small, it's just a small single axle trailer. So this one here is going to be used to move more than one implement, one, more than one tractor or implement at a time. And then it can also be used as a car hauler. But it is a complete and utter turd. Um, obviously it's, it's not pretty, that's obvious. Um, it's missing an entire section of the deck in the middle. So we got to put a deck on it. I went and checked the, uh, I checked the brakes. The brakes, uh, none of the magnets and the electric brakes were good. So we've got four new magnets for the brakes. I've got a new set of shoes and hardware for another side of the brakes. It needs completely rewired. It needs a breakaway box in the front. Um, it basically needs completely revamped on the electrical side. Most of the brakes, some of the suspension, uh, and then also some work needs to be done here and here and here. All Everywhere. of this. Uh, the cool thing is, though, it, is that, it, number one, it was cheap, but uh, it actually pulls fantastic. Like, this thing pulls down the road straight as an arrow. It looks like... I know you're laughing about it. <laughs> he talked about it the whole way home. <laughs> yeah, I was blown away. This thing this thing pulls so straight. And, like, so the the whole idea of this trailer when I, when I bought it from the guy was that... Uh, Everybody laughs at it and everybody is like this is the biggest piece of crap ever and then it always proves people wrong because it just is it, Somehow some farmer back in the 80s built this thing and it is sweet Like it actually does way more than it looks like it can do, but I'm gonna treat it right I'm gonna actually uh, You know completely redo the wiring and do, redo the brakes and and make it give it a little bit of love It hasn't had in, you know what ever yeah as old as I am probably <laughs> so 84 years something like that uh, so that's the trailer. That's why there's parts for the trailer on the 1882. But the trailer is probably way, way, way back burner. Uh, so that's a bigger project. The 1882 is a bigger project. The other huge project is the F100, which I know a couple of you have seen um, and commented on. Uh, this old girl. When we brought it back home this motor needed some attention and i didn't know exactly where it needed attention um, but i did know that um, a simple tune-up wasn't gonna cut it and so last weekend i uh i did a leak down test on it i already did a compression test on the engine and all eight cylinders are at like 60 psi it's like half of what it should be it's quite bad um so I did a leak down test on it last weekend. Um, I just pressurized each cylinder at top dead center and checked what uh, leakage we had and where it was coming from. And it looks like the rings are just shot in this. Some of the valves are burnt, or at least they're leaking a little bit. Maybe they're not burnt, they're just not sealing. Um, but anyway, this, this engine is quite tired um, to the point where it can idle around the driveway, but it can't really go anywhere or do anything. So, um, I'm looking for a good used uh, Y block, 292, 312, any of the Y blocks that'll bolt into this. Looking for a good used Y block. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to run um, and get this thing down the road for at least a couple years until I have a chance to actually rebuild this engine properly. If anybody knows uh, anywhere near Ohio where there's a good uh, used uh, 292, 312, any of the Y blocks. Um, 
let me know. Because I don't have the time to completely rebuild this in 2022. I just don't. So, um, if I'm going to pull this motor, I'm going to put something straight back in that actually runs. Um, it can't sit for, you know, six months while I rebuild an engine. So, that's the update on this uh, 64F100. Fun fact, these uh, shelters, <laughs> these shelters don't hold up so great. <laughs> Um, we came out one day and this entire shelter had flipped up, like upended and ended itself up in the woods. I somehow managed to get it back anchored to the ground. Um, and you can see now, if you look back down that way, it's actually anchored to the truck now. So it can't like come out. <laughs> if you look right here, it's also anchored to the truck. So it can't come and up out of the ground. there's a on it now, so it won't catch. I don't understand why you pay $300 for a shelter and it's just not the best thing ever. <laughs> it's so weird. Okay, so that's the F100. He's a sweet little guy, but he needs some love. And then, uh, back in the shop, we've got lights. Uh, we've got tiller. We've got other thing. Spinning, Spinning Jenny. Jenny thing. And we do have the 1882. So, um, look forward to some M18 videos. Uh, the 1250 over here, I mean, it's like a Swiss watch. I don't ever, it, it's just, it's the most reliable thing I have. So, I mean, it, it's going to get some work uh, probably in the next, I don't know, month or two. We're going to be uh, leveling and grading some property with it. Um, so, there's going to be some rear implement work that we're going to do with it. Um, so maybe I'll get a chance to take some video with that. I'm not sure. We have a neighbor who wants us to do some um, some uh, grading and leveling of some of their property. So this will be doing a portion of that work. And this here will be doing another portion of the work. Um, and if we get a chance to film any of that, um, it'd be sweet. Because um, you get to see the tractors actually doing work, which is the whole reason we, we have them. It's because they're useful. And... They actually do things. They're not just fun, they're actually useful. So that's it. Um yeah, thanks for hanging out and being patient with the Magnum. I know it's taken forever and I keep apologizing on every shop update, but that's life. If anybody's ever had a project and had a life outside of their hobby, then they understand exactly what I mean. So um yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you.